Team Panic. And it is time to look at how Guestimate, uh, with the new and, well, maybe improved Blade uh, went at ARC's November meet. As mentioned, this is a new blade. This is the blade that is the super easy and cheap blade. It is two PCBs with angle brackets from a local hardware store attached. If you have not seen that video, I will leave a link in the description down below. Uh, I wanted to try this out because I made these on video and said that this is the easiest way to build a weapon but I hadn't fought it yet. So now that I have fought it, we can actually have a look at how effective this whole system is. Now, something I didn't mention in that video, this blade is about 32 to 35 grams, somewhere in that weight range. It is fairly hefty and most of that weight is all the way out at the very, very edges of the spin which means that it has a very high moment of inertia, which you will see going through into these fights here. I promise it is very, very obvious here. The final thing to say before we jump into fights uh, is that the pits are going to be open for all of these fights. Uh, the hardware in the pits was fixed between the last month and this month. However, uh, putting them back in, the software seems to have fallen over. So this is going to be an iterative process to get these pits back up and running. But it, it is being worked on. If you are not interested in fights where there is a pit open the full time, maybe skip this video. Otherwise, continue on through with me into these fights. Speaking of, the first fight up is up against Blade Tip, which was... Not great, first up, because Blade Tip is designed to be a robot that breaks spinners, specifically horizontal spinners. So, uh, let's see how this went. That could have been better. There's a couple of things going on here. First of all, uh, the spin-up time was ridiculous. Uh, there seems to be something, like something went wrong, like throwing the weapon up, like the weapon stick up, didn't cause the weapon to spin up. I actually had to like feather it around a little bit to get the weapon to spin up properly in the first place. Blah, that's never good. I don't like that type of thing. I prefer just to be able to go whack and put the spinner to where I want it and have it spin, but no dice in this particular case. So I had to kind of feather it around a little bit, which gave me a bit of a slow start in this fight. Uh, the good thing that happened in this fight is that uh, Blade Tip is a nylon printed chassis and we were taking chunks out of it. So that is a win for the super simple uh, weapon design that we have going on here. These, although they are just mild steel blades, did actually manage to do damage to a nylon print. Huzzah! That is honestly uh, a great result like i was expecting it to do something but the fact that it has actually done something provably is beautiful to me that is that is really good i mean also all props to owen the driver of blade tip he did a very very good job of keeping the front end of blade tip pointed at my weapon basically at all times he was very very much in control of this fight uh yeah, just because A, he's a really good driver, and also B, uh, the gyro that I was talking about. You saw it there. We stood up a little bit on the gyro, but also the gyro does make it a little bit difficult to drive. It's fine to drive with the weapon off, but as soon as the weapon gets spinning, 
uh, yeah, I don't know. It seems to affect the drive somewhat, which does make it a little bit hard to actually keep the drive going. And of course, we ramped up at one point, gyroed a little bit, slammed into the ground, and into the pit we went. Yeah, sometimes uh, having a big weapon does more harm to you than it does to your opponent. And this, uh, I think, we proved right here in this particular fight. Still, though, good fun. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And again, Owen did a very, very good job in this fight. Moving on, we have a fight against Antimatter. Now, I will say if you want to right now, pause this video and jump back to the start of the blade tip fight. In the corner, you get just a peek of Antimatter versus a brand new vert called Business Time. And uh, unfortunately for Antimatter, it doesn't go particularly well. Uh, in the footage of my fight with Blade Tip, you can see Antimatter being thrown around left, right, and center. They had quite the repair job to do between their business time fight and their fight with me, which is what you're about to see here. Uh, all power to them, they did actually manage to get the robot re-repaired and working again, working enough to get it into the arena and drive around a bit. Uh, so, let's take a look at this fight against a bruised and beaten antimatter. As mentioned, uh, Antimatter, and as you definitely saw, Antimatter was having issues there. Uh, it turned out after this particular fight, I did have a, a quick chat to them, and it turned out that one of their motor mounts was a bit wobbly, uh, which they hadn't managed to fix between the business time fight and the my fight. 
Uh, so that meant that every now and again they were just intermittently losing drive on one side, which is why they were crab walking a fair amount. Uh, I was also having difficulty with drive. Again, it's kind of the gyro effect thing that I was talking about earlier, but also uh, one of my motors started to give up the ghost a little bit. It's still wobbly now because I didn't actually catch this until post event. It was after the rumble at the very end of things that I went, Oh, that probably didn't help. Uh, so, and indeed it did not help, uh, as it turns out, especially in this type of fight. Uh, with the weapon that I have, with the two teeth on it, and the fact that it's spinning really, really fast, bite is a massive, massive thing that you want. You want to be able to in, like increase your bite as much as possible because this particular design has a high MOI, uh, and is spinning really quickly, which means that his bite is fairly low. So the optimal strategy for this type of fight would have been to back up, slam, back up, slam, back up, slam. But I just wasn't getting that. I got it a couple of times in this fight, and I, although I didn't uh, take photos of Antimatter's front after this fight, there are some shots in the video where you can see little gashes at about the right height for the weapon uh, in Antimatter's front. Uh, but I wasn't doing it consistently and wasn't able to do it consistently because, yeah, A, gyro forces and B, uh, was not driving particularly well because this side is a touch wobbly in the gearbox, which I think did get worse as the event wore on, which is never good. But of course, though, because neither of us was really able to do too much to the other person, it did end up in a draw. Which means it is now time to move on to our third fight, which up against a robot I've already talked about. This time we are going up against Business Time, the brand new scary vert. <laughs> So again, we had the issues with the uh, blade spinning up and uh, Leon, who built and drive business time, was very, very nice that he, uh, in letting us spin up. I think he also kind of wanted to stress test his own robot, so he let me sit in the corner there and get as far up to speed as I wanted to before charging in and exploding the pair of us. Uh, that is just, it's an insane hit and it's amazing. Uh, I tried to go frame by frame through it, but so much happens so quickly that a lot of those frames are just blurs. I think my favorite frame though, that you can actually make out what is going on a little bit, is this one where uh, my weapon on the actual can of the motor, because the whole can of the motor came off, bounces off the wall between the two of us and pits itself, which Hilarious, uh, that was amazing and very, very funny. <laughs> but yeah, so, so much energy in that hit. Now, the, the problem that uh, Business Time had here is that post the antimatter fight, because obviously I was standing there fighting uh, Blade Tip while uh, Business Time and antimatter were fighting. And I saw that when Business Time gets stuck upside down like that, if you touch them, at all, they overbalance back onto their wheels and they are good to go again. Now, in this particular instance, I was down a weapon. This robot design does not have a whole lot of armor. When he got stuck upside down, 
I was like, right, if I try and push you, I try and touch you at all, you are going to self right again and then your weapon's gonna be back up to speed and I am going to be out of the competition, like just obliterated, obliterated. Uh, so I backed off and didn't touch him. Technically, he could have gone for the draw if he had just continued wiggling his sticks enough. Uh, I, he wasn't actually being counted out because he was getting just enough crab walking going that he could be considered still in the fight. Uh, however, he decided to take the L and uh, stop controlling uh, business time and lost that fight, which, whew, I was not expecting to win that fight at all. That was, uh, yeah, wow. And as you could very clearly see, business time is definitely the stronger of the two spinners there. Uh, so, so much energy of that hit basically just came straight out of his spinner. Uh, that was incredible. Um, and also, obviously, I had lost my weapon motor. So this was a good thing, kind of, because it meant I needed to change weapon motor. So I went from the very, very cheap 1806 that I was running uh, to a old school DYS purple one, which these things turned out to be fairly bulletproof when I originally used them. They were used in This Is A Party up here uh, and survived really, really well. So hopefully moving forwards, the new weapon motor does better things than the old one does. There was one problem though with putting the new one in and that is that it used three mil bolts and the carbon fiber arm that I used doesn't quite fit those, so the bolts still stick out a little bit, which means that the blade is even higher off the ground and also now not running on a nice smooth surface, it's running on two bolts, uh, which is a bit of an issue, which you'll see coming up in the fight against Crunch. Crunch is a wedge bot made out of some kind of uh, like metal mesh of some kind. I would assume an aluminium mesh, but it could also be a steel mesh. I don't really know. issue basically uh, I still had some issue getting it to spin up but it did manage to get up to speed faster which is kind of giving me the impression that it might be an ESC issue and that the old motor that got destroyed by business time was just also a bit shit as well so the combination of those two things gave us the uh, like the actual spin up times that we got in the first three fights and then putting a better motor on, we're only getting the dodginess out of, I guess, either the ESC or the connections. It could be the connections as well, uh, which means that we actually managed to get spinning up a little bit faster. Uh, but that wasn't really the greatest thing because the gyro got us again. And again, that is because all of the weight in these new spinners is far out on the edges, uh, which means that there's very, very high MOI, which means it gyros so easily, like just ridiculously easily. Uh, and yes, uh, fighting a wedge like that, you flick up the wedge, you gyro a little bit, you fall over, slam the weapon to the ground and fly into the pit again. <laughs> oh boy, sometimes it just do be like that though. Uh, especially again, when you have a giant weapon stuck to the front of your robot. Uh, also, yes, there was some drive issue caused by having these bolts out the bottom. It was kind of expected a little bit, but it was a little bit worse than I thought it might have been. I will also say a huge, huge, huge thank you to Steve, uh, who I've talked about on this channel before. He uh, actually helped with the rebuild of this because obviously that is a little bit hard for me to do. And also I was behind on fights at this point, so I was fighting in the B League as well. And partway through the repair on this, I had to jump over and fight uh, in the B League too. So Steve kind of took over and basically did the motor swap for me. So again, huge thank you to Steve, because uh, otherwise this fight would not have happened basically at all. I probably just would have had to forfeit it or go in 
modalist, which I almost probably would prefer to forfeit it at that point, like going up against a wedge bot at effectively a third down weight or like two thirds weight. Yeah, that, that just wouldn't have been a fun fight for anybody really. So uh, again, huge thank you to Steve for that one. Uh, and finally, uh, for our round robin bracket, we are going up against a robot called Brick. This is a Lego robot. It literally is made entirely out of Lego. The chassis is glued together, but the lid is literally held on with Lego connection. <laughs> And again, this one was another quick one uh, thanks to the open pit, but it would have been a quick one either way really because that first hit, we actually managed to knock Brick's lid off, which meant that his battery was exposed. And as Brick is built by the EO of the event, Chris, and the rules state that if your battery is exposed, you need to stop, he would have probably stopped if he hadn't been catapulted into the pit by the hit itself. So. Uh, either way, this was going to be a very, very quick fight. Uh, again, we saw the immense amount of gyro that Guestimate gets going on here, but thankfully in this particular instance, we didn't hit the ground as hard, so I was able to kind of keep us away from the pit and keep us in the arena enough that we were able to win that particular fight. Not really much more to talk about here. It was a fairly quick one. Uh, unfortunately. But with only two wins and a draw, uh, we're not uh, moving on through into the finals here with Gastamit. So uh, we are instead moving on into the Rumble. And of course I went to the Rumble. I love the Rumble, but also Rumbles are a great place to stress test things. And I was still fairly keen on stress testing this weapon. So we jumped right on in to the Rumble. Oh, I work way better upside down, okay. Oh. <laughs> It's an undercutter, you just didn't know it. I'm gonna take it! Oh! It's too big! How much weight is it? How heavy is that? Uh, like 30 grams or something? I don't know. Yeah, because I mean, it's like a hanging bucket. It's 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 a hanging bucket. And as it turns out, it works for. Yeah, I should be driving upside down this whole time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Did you tell me this before the fight? No. Uh, uh, we need three seats of gear. Three minutes left. Can somebody be stability heavy with the leg? Oh! Yes, thank you. <laughs> Get revenge roll and do it. Oh no. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Get him. Hammer him. Hammer him. I can't. Get him. Get him. Get him. Run into him. There you are. I think my husband wants to run low. Nothing can stop him. Two minutes left. Did I go in, Nate? Yeah, get him. His battery's running out. Just keep running into him. Make his battery work. The tread's off the left wheel. Yeah, the tread's off the left wheel. So the oh, right. Right. Yeah, so it's got very little traction left. It's probably got a loose yeah, bit. Really yeah. Yeah, it's practice time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's crab walking practice. Okay, yeah. Just drag it we just get it. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. One minute left. Now drive him a bit and drive into him. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Get him. <laughs> get him, mate. <laughs> not kind of a lot for me to say here because I kind of narrated it off camera, uh, like from off camera while the rumble itself was going on. Uh, yeah, a couple of things of note. Yes, lots and lots of gyro. The gyro was on full display in this particular rumble, which partly because I was not avoiding it. I was like letting myself go up into uh, gyro positions and purposefully staying there because of course when you're up in this position you can just back the weapon motor off to drop back down again. Uh, in some cases I was increasing it so that I could stay at a cool little angle for a little while. Yeah, it was just fun. Messing around with gyro is like always, always fun to do, especially when you're in a larger arena and you know you're not going to pit yourself instantly by doing so. Uh, then the other thing that happened, we landed upside down and driving upside down ended up being way better uh, because we were running on just the point of the screw and the point of the screw was spinning around which kind of gives it a low friction thing. It does affect the drive because uh, that spin of the screw does impart a small amount of force in one direction which means you basically can't st hit, sit still like a shark, you just have to keep moving and keep going in a direction because otherwise the weapon sitting on the ground is going to spin you in a direction anyway so you might as well be driving at somebody. But it was actually way more controllable upside down so maybe in the future I will design a new version of the guesstimate chassis which has a switch poking out the bottom so that you literally build and drive the thing fully upside down. I think that might be a go at some point uh, because as mentioned it worked pretty well, <laughs> which I was not expecting. Uh, other than that, we did, and of course, end up in the pit, kind of halfway through-ish, the rumble there. Uh, and yeah, business time is still just a very, very scary robot, even when you manage to knock the tread off one wheel. Uh, it Yeah, it's just a very, very scary machine, and something I'm going to have to uh, keep in mind moving forwards here at ARC, because... That's, that's going to have to be something that we take down at some point. I don't really know how I want to do that yet, but we'll build something. We'll build something specifically to take down business time at some point here in the near future. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed those fights, uh, and I will see you in the next video.